Hey, what's up everyone? Francisco Solis here with a new carnivorous plant video. Today, I will be giving you guys some more Venus flytrap facts. And I will have to start off by saying that Venus flytraps are native to the coasts of North and South Carolina in the United States of America. Normally, each trap has a total of six trigger hairs, three on each cheek. A few exceptions would be FTS lunatic fringe, right here, which has a total of four trigger hairs, two on each cheek, as you can see here. And the other exception would be Korean Melody Shark, which I have noticed that grows eight trigger hairs, four on each side. So these two plants are different than the normal six haired traps, which are probably on the typical Venus fly traps or on occasionally most, but that happens to some though. I don't know why. <clears throat> An insect dies by triggering a single hair twice and activating the trap closure in less than a second. Movement from the insect inside the trap seals the deal. Most Venus flytrap plants purchased from stores, like this one right here, are tissue cultured or are natural divisions of known cultivars or clones. Most Venus flytraps, oh, I'm not most, I mean all Venus flytraps, need nutrient poor soil. If you add some miracle grow to this bad boy or any of these Venus flytrap pots, they will die. So don't give miracle grow to your carnivorous plants. Venus flytraps, whatever you got. Anything carnivorous plants, do not give them miracle grow. Bad. The Venus flytrap faces a high risk of extinction in the wild. It's listed as vulnerable on the red list from the International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. Damn, that's long. I-U-C-N. Thomas Jefferson was fascinated by the Venus flytrap. And after numerous requests, he was able to acquire seeds in 1804. Venus flytrap plants grown from seeds are all different. Each seed grown plant is genetically unique. Barry Rice, the author of several books about carnivorous plant cultivation, came down with a nasty case of athlete's foot, <laughs> which caused him to lose chunks of skin. With extra toe skin laying around, he decided to try a little experiment. He fed a Venus flytrap the skin and triggered it to close. It took a while for the trap to open up again, and Rice admits in his report on the experiment that he didn't expect the plant to have digested the skin. He highly doubted that the trap's fairly weak digestive enzymes would be able to break down the proteins. To his surprise, the scrap of skin was almost gone and what was left was partially digested goo. The plant lived and was given a diet of wholesome insects afterwards, which is nice to know. Doing an experiment on a Venus flytrap and then feeding it well for the rest of its life. That's just nice. But um, yeah, again, for more information on these plants or to purchase rare Venus flytraps, please visit flytrapstore.com. And as always, thanks for watching my videos, everyone.